Welcome everyone to Workforce Solution Capital Area's Career Awareness Webinar Series. My name is Natalie Obregón and I work with Workforce Solutions here um, just with uh, as an education outreach specialist so we can bring to you some great information about in-demand industries and in our region. So I'm really, really excited that you're able to join us today. We have a great panel for you all today and we want to, to talk to the three professionals with certain affinity to you know, give some more information about the different career pathways and the current experiences in the game development industry. Thank you so much for joining everyone. Uh, we are very excited to have you join us. We prepared some questions for you to be um, interviewed and Mr. Bailey Holsey here with uh, Round Rock ISD will be the one to ask the questions. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and start the introductions. Go ahead. So uh, hey first tell us, oh. uh, sorry. I was, sorry. <laughs> I'll ask, um, first tell us about yourself and what is your role at Certain Affinity? See, I'm so excited. I just jump right in and all over everybody. I'm sorry about that. Um, my name is Allison Alden. I am the Marketing Relationship Manager at Certain Affinity. Um, full disclosure, I did not aspire to a career in gaming. I am a huge gamer by hobby and I um, actually started working as a receptionist, then a secretary, and then a legal assistant um, in the criminal prosecutions for 10 years. Um, during that time, I uh, um, obtained my associate's degree in paralegal studies from Pima Community College, that's in Tucson, Arizona, see I'm not even from, from Texas, and a bachelor's of science degree in public administration from Northern Arizona University. Um, I be also became nationally certified as a paralegal during that time. After I did that for a while, I shifted my focus to working in child protective services as a case manager for a couple of years, but after doing that, realized I missed the legal side of the house. So I applied for a job at Certain Affinity. Um, I spent four years volunteering with one of the largest run Halo fan sites outside of the official Halo channels called Griff Ball Hub. I ran their social media, was one of the major admins on the site, and I was a key player with uh, the industry events. And I like to point out that I swung the ban hammer judiciously. I transitioned my familiarity with video games as a hobby into my legal and project management background, and I've been at Certain Affinity now for almost three years. Um, don't let the title fool you. I also do assist on the legal and business development fronts and really whatever else they put me to work with. And that's me. Cool, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> and uh, I'll take over next. Uh, so afternoon, y'all. My name is Garen Richards. Um, I'm an engineer at Certain Affinity. Uh, my specific uh, specialization is user interface. Um, so I've been SCA for about two years now. I am also not from Texas, but I really love y'all's food here. I'm really digging the Tex-Mex, that's great. Um, I came from Utah, although I, I am a native of Hawaii. So I got my education in Utah at the University of Utah. I did my bachelor's of computer science there and then followed that up with a master's in game engineering following that. And that was about the summer 2018. Um, and immediately after getting out of school, you know, I landed here in beautiful Austin, Texas been loving it to death. And uh, yeah, so, you know, my role at CA is I deal with a lot of the things on our screens, you know, pictures, text, buttons, um, you know, game development is a large team with lots of specializations. But my little corner is I really care deeply about how the pause menu works, that little part of video games. Ooh. So that's uh, what I do. Yeah, well, it goes into the whole package, it seems like. Uh, Garen, uh, just a quick question. You said you did a master's in game engineering. Did I get that right? That is correct. Yeah, there's a, um, there's a, real, a really decent program out of the University of Utah where they offer a whole master's uh, degree and program for that. And, uh, and yeah. was most of that online or in person? Oh, that was, that was in person. Um, uh, my specific grad program was a whole studio simulation two year. And so we brought projects from pitch to completion and ship. And cool. that was the whole two years of that. Okay. Thanks. Excellent. And then uh, to round out the trio here, my name is Jay Goldberg. Yes, my first name is just the single letter. Um, and I grew up in a family owned arcade and basically knew I wanted to get into gaming uh, because of that. So after collecting quarters for a bunch of years, I focused on art and programming in high school back in New York. And then uh, I eventually got a bachelor's of science in digital media at Drexel University in Philadelphia. Um, and that well-rounded program taught me everything from how to pitch, how to create, how to publish, and how to market video games. 
So um, I actually had a core background in 3D art and animation, but I shifted gears to focus more on community marketing, which is now pretty much my official title as the head of community for Certain Affinity, which essentially spans marketing, PR, social media, a little bit of everything, but basically talking to all of our fans about how awesome we are, how awesome they are, and why we want to share all these games together. And uh, I've been doing this for about 15 years now, spanning about 10 different companies all over the United States. Uh, and I'm just really happy to be a part of Austin, Texas now. Cool. That's, it's really exciting to have all three of you on the calls to see like different um, backgrounds and, and different aspirations as children growing up. You know, Jay, it sounds like you've always wanted to do this and Allison, you haven't. So, uh, I wanted to be like a weather a, person, okay? Let me tell you, <laughs> but it has changed quite a bit over the course of my life. <laughs> I'm kind of the same way. I've been bouncing around, which is great. I love where I'm at now. Um, and and I, I, in my experience, every job you have and every experience you have throughout growing up and really your life can contribute to who you are as a person. So um, I've, I've seen positive things come out of all of my experiences. But Jay, just a quick question um, off the side for you. Um, when you were just getting started in gaming and you knew you wanted to be a game developer, where, where did you turn to first? Did you start to develop some really small things like on uh, Apple devices or you know, Pi game in Python? Or where is, where is a place that people can get started making games like over the summer or something? Sure. So um, I actually got started back on like kind of the Apple twos with the uh, mech system, if you remember the Minnesota Educational Computer Company. Um, and luckily, my middle school, and my high school both had um, computing classes, which taught us um, little bits about programming, art, um, and kind of everything in between. And that got me started. And then um, I kind of kept going down that path when I was looking for a college to go to. And when I saw what Drexel's specific program was of digital media, um, that allowed me to focus on everything in gaming. Because when I first went to college, I didn't know where I wanted to end up. I just knew I wanted to be a part of the industry. Um, so that allowed me to, f to learn art, animation, programming, you know, marketing, branding, everything in between, and then graduate and then make my decision. Um, and that's kind of how I ended up. I started art and animation, and then I shifted back over to marketing. So, um, and I'm very happy with where I've ended up. Awesome. Uh, so that kind of leads us into the next question. How did you decide to become a, uh, whatever your occupation is, which is, um, let me do another side question. Uh, I just wanted to get y'all's occupations straight in my head because I'm not a business person. I don't know all the, uh, the you know, sort of auxiliary business aspects of, of a big company like this or uh, you know a company in general so Allison you're in marketing as well like Jay is that similar to his position or different so my position is actually pretty different um, we work very closely together on a lot of different um, programs and that's what's interesting about the business side of the house when it comes to game development is you do have a lot of overlapping so I assist on the marketing side and we're doing a transition actually right now where I'm doing more on the legal and business development side and, and a lot of the marketing is now starting to move towards Jay. So okay. it's, it is very interesting because you are exposed to so many different um, shades of the company and get to see so, so many different uh, sides of it. So it is, you learn quite a bit and you have to really be, be, be comfortable, you know, being diverse, being wearing the different hats, being able to juggle lots of different projects and, and switch gears very, very quickly. So it sounds like a company like this would be a really good fit for somebody who has a diverse array of talents and interests. I think so. Really. I, th I think the nice thing about having the, the diverse um, interests is just that you get, to, you get to try so many new, new things and you really get to kind of dial down on what it is that you enjoy and what you're good at. Darren and Jay, would you say that's pretty accurate? Uh, I think so. Y'all, you know, th these two on the other side of the office, they're doing the real work, right? They're making sure, you know, I have stuff to do that I have work to do, but yeah, they are definitely the ones holding the house down. You know, I show up, I write code, but I got to shout out to these two for making sure I have code to write. So, and then I ask him what the code means and to give me a screenshot of it. And then I tell everybody how awesome it is. There you go. <laughs> yeah. He, he's the words man. He's the words man. Very, very collaborative. It sounds like you never do work on an island. 
No, and that's something I've learned over, because I've worked at a number of different companies over the years. And that is the one thing about the game industry is you really get to know every single person in your company. Um, you may not work with them every single day, but you will eventually talk to pretty much every single person that's there. Awesome, good deal. Um, so yeah, the question was, how did you, I got it, sidetracked, my bad. How did you decide to become a um, community manager? Per yeah. day, right? Did I say it right? Yeah. So that was my, my official title when I started doing community was community manager. Um, and then there's levels, of course, through that. So, um, but what I actually started out was, was a QA and a customer support uh, mm -hmm. job. And then I took that. And while I was doing those jobs, because that's a good way also for individuals to get into the industry and start to learn about how games are made if they haven't made them them themselves or gone to school yet about it. And, um, and you can learn, I, I will say our QA testers are some of the most amazing people. Um, without them, you would not have a game. So, <laughs> um, but it's a really great way of learning what you like about a game studio and about the company in general. And then you can make a decision of which path do you want to try and focus on. And that worked out really well for me because I just love sharing my passion, talking to people, and now I get paid to do it for a living. So I'm pretty happy about that. I'm pretty interested in your position, Jay. I've never heard anything like that. Um, I'm teaching a senior level engineering course, and one of the aspects of it is stakeholder analysis. So, you know, as you develop your project, you're thinking about all the stakeholders, anybody who has a stake in the game. Um, so it sounds like that's kind of what you're focusing on. You're, you're talking to, you're communicating with, and managing relationships with all those people, the QA, the testers, the, um, the community as a whole. Is that kind of right? Uh, so I'm mostly the mediator between the company and the players or the company and other companies, um, oh. which is partially also Allison with BizDev. Um, but what generally the role you were talking about is more of like a producer or a project manager who that's keeping everything that's going on behind the scene, just running and smooth and in order. And we have lots of amazing producers at certain affinity. Uh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so Garen, how did you decide to become an engineer? Gaming so, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, my story starts when I was seven years old. No, no, no I wasn't that forward thinking. Um, so I knew I wanted to be a programmer, uh, you know, since, you know, I, I was really into computers. I like taking things apart. And, you know, when I was a teen, I was like, okay, I want to do this programming thing. I want to do this computer science thing. Right. And so for the majority of my middle school, high school years, uh, I spent a lot of time you know, in our introductory CS courses that my school was providing. Um, at the same time, I also was like, oh, I'm doing this computer thing, you know, programming, I'm writing stuff in C Sharp, you know, all those other languages, things like that. I was really interested in how they worked. So I also had a career in, you know, just uh, IT support. Um, I did that all through high school and college and grad school. You know, that was the way I kept myself busy when I didn't have homework to do. Um, and it was about, for me, about halfway through my undergraduate working on my bachelor's of science in CS that um, I always liked video games, right? What kid doesn't like games? Mm -hmm. And for a while I was like, you know, maybe that'd be a fun hobby, but you know, maybe my main calling is something more traditional, right? Because I really enjoy the problem solving and things like that. Um, but then, uh, at, you know, at my immediate school, I saw that we had a very, very good program a very good undergraduate that led into a very well-ranked graduate program. And I thought like, okay, hey, if I can stay here in state, because that's also where my family was and you know, pursue this other venture while also still keeping the computer science title of the degree, yeah, why, why not, let's do that. Um, and I never looked back on that decision. So, uh, you know, ever since, oh gosh, I'm trying to come up with the, you know, dates now, but like 2014, 2013, it's just been games for me. And, um, you know, I continued my IT work on the side. I worked for like the computer labs on our school campus, you know, and in my meantime, I was doing lots of homework and lots of personal projects. And so I came to see a fresh out of academia in IT. Um, you know, your typical, you apply after, after, you know, you're done with school. And so they caught me, you know, living on two, three hours of sleep for six, seven years of my life. They got fresh, bushy eyed Garen, you know, first day at the studio and, um, yeah, so that's, you know, I, I 
you know, had, did a lot of independent projects. I worked with a lot of, uh, you know, did a few internships while, you know, in Utah, working with game companies there. And then when it came time for me to be like, okay, I want to, you know, I want to contribute to something large. And so when I brought into my search, I saw this wonderful town of Austin and then certain affinity had a place in my heart just because, you know, I'm a fan of their previous work. So we're at that part of history now where all of a sudden fans of the games they made in the studio are coming to work for the studio. Right. And, um, you know, through my head in the application pile and it's been a love story ever since. And I've been enjoying it immensely since then. So, yeah. Oh, thanks for sharing. Um, you said something that I found pretty interesting. When you were in high school, you were working with IT. How did you get that gig? Yeah. Um, so I just asked. I, that's, that is not me trying to make it sound fancy. No, I literally just asked. You know, we have a computer lab. We had a you know, an IT person that was watching all of those, you know, all the at Macs the and at, at the high school. Yeah. And I was like, Hey, can I help you out on, you know, after school and get, you know, learn about how this stuff works, how this stuff runs. And that's how I began to just like, you know, I could, you know, I was beginning to understand how to program these computers, but like, how do they work? How do they function? And I was, you know, that was just really great because then later in my you know college career when it came time to say like you know we need to get to the nitty-gritty of the hardware I'm like oh okay I've yeah I've fixed dozens of graphics cards in my time I kind of know how that stuff works so um yeah it was uh, I was very fortunate just for I just walked right up to our staff and like hey we have a lot of computers here who manages all this stuff do they need an extra hand after school you know I'm, I'm waiting for my little sister to get off school anyway I got an extra hour or two like I want to learn so that's what I did I think a lot of my students will find that really inspiring. I'm glad you had that experience. Yeah. Cool. And then Allison, you shared a lot about um, how, how you decided to join your occupation. Uh, do you want to um, add anything to that? I will, I will keep it brief um, because I have had a very interesting journey to get to where I am today. Um, you know, like I said, I started out working as a receptionist um, at the local, uh, honestly, the local prosecutor's office in Tucson, Arizona. Um, you know, worked in legal for 10 years um you know worked in actually i worked for, I worked for government for about a total of 14 years and i was i have been following certain affinity um since i want to say about 2014 i in working with griff ball hub i would come out to austin every year for rtx because we always had a booth out there so i would take vacation from one job to come out here and essentially do another job but it was it was all on our own time and we were all volunteering our time because we all had so much fun running the site and leagues and and if you don't know what griff ball is i highly recommend uh checking it out on halo it is essentially rugby with um swords and hammers and it is the one of the most fun game types that that is in halo you know we worked very closely as griff ball hub with 343 being able to come up with maps and create maps and um getting the right stuff in there and the right settings and all that so it's it was it was very much a fun time in my life and I saw actually Max Hoberman, who was a president of, of the company at, at the time, um, well, obviously now too, but at that time was giving a talk on Halo Master Chief Collection because they had just announced it. And it was at RTX. And I thought, this guy seems pretty cool. He looks, he sounds like he knows what he's talking about and realized, you know, that he ran a certain affinity. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna follow them both on Twitter. And in let's see, what was, what was that? summer 2017, they posted up, um, up what my position, I ended up with the, the position I ended up getting posted up on Twitter. And I looked at the, the, the job post and said, you know, I can take the experience that I have and the things that I've done. And I can talk them into showing them that this does, this does translate. And a lot of the things I've been doing within my government sphere and uh, the jobs that I have been working, they, they do translate. And cool. here's here, and here's how I'm going to show you how. So, you know, I laugh and say six interviews later because it was, um, it, it was all video interviews and everything, you know, because I was in another state. Um, I got the job offer and I was, I never thought I worked for a video game company. And it has been, it has been a blast. It has been one of the, probably in a lot of ways, one of the most challenging things, but also one of the most exciting things too. And I just, that's why my, my, my story is all, don't ever think that just because you didn't start off in the game industry means that you can't get into it because like, I was as far from the game industry as you possibly could be. So <laughs> you just, you know, just experience, it helps. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you were at a place where you understood your strengths and how you could leverage those strengths for the good of this particular company. And then you very much so. to them. Yeah, so, definitely. Cool. That's awesome. I think that's very powerful. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna feel this to everyone and, and you guys might have an idea of who wants to answer it. 
Uh, please describe your typical work day and or what are your main responsibilities? Sure, uh, I can jump in on that first. So um, for me, the, the I guess the best part about my typical job is that it's very atypical. Um, every single day is different. It really is. I, I like I can plan out weeks and months and even a year ahead, but there could be a news story or there could be a tweet from, you know, a really popular streamer. And then all of a sudden my entire day changes. Um, so, but my day typically does revolve around finding out the best ways to market our company and finding out the best ways to get people to know our company. And also uh, I even help a little bit with our recruiting team to make sure that we can hire um, outstanding individuals from around the country, around the world, whoever's eligible to work for us to make sure that, you know, they can make it here to Austin, Texas or our new studio up in uh, Toronto, Canada and come join us. So my, my typical day, I mean, I'm, I'm, at my keyboard doing this basically the entire day or on the phone talking to various people. But um, it really changes every single day, um, whether it's helping with video creation or, um, you know, working on a text document or uh, getting a pitch ready for uh, or some marketing screenshots. You never really know it. And that's kind of the fun and why I still do it today. I wonder if there are any positions at the company that are more, um, routine where your typical day is more um, to be expected like that? I would toss that question to Garen because I feel like on the development side, they have a lot more of the routine than on the business side because we're all over the place. Like we said, you know, we pretty much do what we're told and if something comes down and your day can completely change. So I'm throwing that one to Garen. <laughs> All right, thank you. You know, these two, their days are all over the place, so my day can stay the same. So I appreciate that, right? Um, yeah, you know, so shout out to the, you know, three or four engineers watching. So my day is pretty cut and dry, you know, for your typical, even just software engineering. You know, I wake up and um, it is a very, you know, everyone's, you know, contributing to this massive game together. And so I wake up, get the latest version of our game, and, um, you know, that usually takes some time. Thank you, work from home and Spectrum Internet. So that takes a minute to build, to download. While that's going, I'm making some coffee. So I'm making myself, you know, a cup of that. And uh, while that's final, while that's you know, beginning to finish up, we have our morning meetings, which are morning meetings, are very brief stand-up updates. You know, I inform the rest of my, for me specifically, the UI team. What are my goals for the day? Is there anything blocking my progress? Do I need anything? Do I need an adult, AKA a producer to step in to get me some answers for some questions? Um, and after that's all good to go, it's, it's headphones on and I'm just writing code, fixing, you know, you know, fixing problems, closing out tasks and just working on features or, you know, your typical game development. Um, and if I'm fortunate, you know, it's a pretty meeting free day and I can just get some things done. And uh, around the end of the day, I circle back around, I update with my team, tell them what went well, if there's anything, you know, hey, I see that, you know, this thing I want to get started on is probably blocked over here by this other team, this other person, we should go, you know, converse with them, see what we can do to make that smoother. And um, yeah, just that last update and, you know, just sign off for the day and one more I get latest so I can let Spectrum, you know, pull down the rest of the game for me overnight. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much my day-to-day -day four or five days of the week. You're pretty standard software stuff. Cool. Quick question. When you are communicating with your team, um, what kind of tools are you using? Do you do all the bugs through Jira or GitHub or are you using Slack to talk to each other? So um, Zoom and Slack are surgically implanted in me. So those two are directly on my task bar at all times we you know we all these meetings that we're having is right over zoom right now um and any you know day, you know hour to hour minute to minute conversations are happening in slack we do use jira for our task tracking but you know that may differ from team to team and their tools that they need um but yeah yeah you know and if it, we were in the office you know all those meetings would just be regular all everybody just find a conference room and huddle around for five to 10 minutes. You know, they call them stand ups, which means everyone standing, just get out what you're doing and what you need as soon as possible. But yeah, those are the tools of the trade right now. Cool. And Allison, did you want to talk about your typical workday and responsibilities or should we go 
I think I am totally fine uh, moving on. I, I would say a lot of my just mirrors Jay's. It's it kind of di differs day to day with covering as many areas that I that I cover. It just it differs and just be open to change and be flexible. That's the biggest advice I have when it comes to this. <laughs> good deal. I think those are good skills in anywhere. Um, which leads into the next question: What academic, technical, or soft skills are required for your position? And again, I'll fill this to anybody. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll start off with this one. Um, ac academically, you know, e e the, the typical path, right, is through a, a regular, you know, just a college path of, you know, a undergraduate degree and in some rare instances a graduate degree, but, you know, just a quick side note that is not exactly required. Um, you know, when we're looking for new developers or people to join the team, we don't require that you do have that, you know, next to your name, but we look for, you know, what kind of things have you made? You know, what, what projects have you made? Not even for anybody else, not for any big clients, but like what game did you make and did you bring that to fruition, right? Um, so, you know, as a game engineer, you know, we're, I'm looking, we're looking for people that can, you know, know how to program, how to use the various tech and tech stacks and engines and all those tools that come with, you know, being a programmer well, um, they have to, you know, have a good knack for problem solving, right? Uh, games are very tricky. There's very small edge cases. You have to learn how to hunt those down and come up with a solution, hopefully sooner rather than later. And, you know, we're also wanting people that have the ability to communicate effectively, right? Especially right now, I'm working from home. I no longer have the ability to stand up, walk to my coworker's desk and be like, you know, hey, we have this very specific problem, this very specific line and talk this out. Like, no, this has to be done over text, has to be done over voice. And, you know, one last thing I wanna, you know, stress is that there is a difference between speaking to another engineer and there's a difference speaking like for me to a designer or to an artist or someone, a non-technical role, right? You have to learn how to break down these complex problems into verbiage and language that you both can understand and come to a solution with. Um, so yeah, if you can, you know, if, if, if you're able to have, you know, you know, explain a technical, diff you know, technically difficult problem to your friend whom, you know, maybe only uses the internet for Facebook and Instagram, you're, you're, you know, you're doing great if you can communicate that well. So, yeah. I just want to piggyback cool. on that a little bit um, too, is, is because Garen kind of touched on it, but um, soft skills, your soft skills are so one of the biggest things that I can push regardless of whether your development, your business side, you know, whatever side of the house you're on, um, you know, having your soft skills, soft skills, excuse me, which can be, you know, one of the biggest things, communication, like, like Garen said, if, if a lot of times um, I have to take the legal contract as our, our, our development agreement, break it down into digestible chunks for both our senior leadership and for the dev team who's assigned to it and tell them li literally it's it's called the what you need to know so it's pulling out what are they what are the things that you as a developer or what are the things that you as senior leadership or you as accounting or you as finance any of those things what are the things that are going to be imperative for you to know in your job so you don't have to read through a 40-page contract or those those kinds of things and knowing how to communicate at all different levels whether it's from with, with, with an engineer who's very technical to another business person to, you know, even to like an executive level. That's one of, and I think it's one of the biggest things that um, speaking with, with our senior leadership team is that that's important to them is, is, you know, speaking to writing communications to executives of a company is going to be very different than writing communications to your peer or to someone else with, within your work product. Because a lot of times our executives, they're, they're, they're busy, you know, they've got the entire company to run and it's how do you take the information and write it in a brief, short synopsis and give them the information that they need and that they need quickly. Um, so definitely soft skills. Like I will, I will, like pound that into the ground as much as possible uh, because that was one of the biggest selling points that I had coming from, you know, a area that was nothing related to video game development aside from just, Hey, this is my hobby and this is what I enjoy doing. And this is fun for me to now this is what I get paid to do was just soft skills is going to be one of your biggest selling points and I'll be done now. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to add to that as well, a little bit on the academic side. Um, when I went to go choose a college, for instance, um, I specifically was looking for a program that was a Bachelor of Science because I wanted to make sure that I got uh, the well-rounded education that focused not just on the game specific portion of what it was. And granted, look, there's some amazing universities that focus just on that. And we even have a, a bunch of people at our studio 
that have gone to those colleges, um, you know, like SMU Guildhall, Full Sail, um, uh, any of the Academy of the Arts. Um, there's, there's an amazing range of great universities that focus just on that. But I wanted to make sure, let's just say gaming isn't what I actually wanted to do, even though I knew I wanted to do it since I was five years old. I wanted to have a backup. And so that allowed me to focus a little more on education. Um, and ju just in case, maybe I wanted to do something else. I also want to stress what Allison pointed out of soft skills and one of the best ways to do it when you're young to acquire those skills. And this is something I look for in the marketing and PR fields is somebody who's worked a retail job or a food service job or something where you're basically having to deal with people who you have no idea who they are and you can just deal with conflict and understand how to talk to somebody. Receptionist, I'm telling you. There you 100%. go. 100%. And all of those all of those types of jobs where you talk to people on a daily basis, you will gain the most amazing set of soft skills of learning how to talk and how to problem solve and how to be a better person yourself and a better communicator than you would literally taking public speaking classes and, you know, PR classes. Uh, I would highly recommend if you have the time and the ability, get one of those front facing, you know, public facing uh, jobs now while you can, and then focus on a career as you continue. And granted, those are great careers as well, but they help you get those soft skills that you may not have. Really good advice. You don't hear that very much. Hey, go be a waiter, go be a, go work in retail. You know, most uh, high school students are like, oh, I have to go work at Bahama Bucks or whatever. I didn't mean to throw them under the bus, but I have to go work at, uh, you know, this, um, job that I do not hope to be my career and they just think it'll give them some money to pass the time to go into college but I'm with you the jobs that I had growing up in restaurants and stuff really really boosted my confidence and personal communication skills and uh, all of those super important things that make you well-rounded and you're right you don't get that in class um, there's no class that's going to teach you how to communicate to lots of different people on your team, on your diverse team, like you other two guys are talking about. Um, I think another good way of doing that is clubs, maybe when you're running a, a project, uh, you're working on a project and you have to talk to everybody who's involved in the club. If there's a game development club or something like that, you guys can jump into that. Um, I had a quick question on the academic side. Um, are there people at y'all's, you say studio instead of company? Yes. <laughs> are, there people, are there people at y'all's studio who have not gone to college, who do not have a bachelor's? Yes, you guys are actually, there, there are several people. In, in fact, the, um, our uh, president co-founder, Max, is one of the biggest ones to say, you know what, I went and got my bachelor's degree in, in photography. And then I went to go work for Bungie. And then I decided I wanted to branch off and open my own company. You know, so it's, it's, it's one of those things where is it a good thing to have? Of course, it's always, you know, schooling is, 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 is schooling. Um, but it's also experience is good too, you know, and going to, going to community college, getting your, your, I am one of the biggest proponents of that. Cause that's what I did going to community college, get, get, get your basic classes done, figure out what you want to do before you're paying the cost of a full scale university, <laughs> you know, and, and I mean, I went, I, I got my bachelor's degree when I was working full, full time, you know, I went to school full time and work full time and it's, it's, it's hard. Like I will 100% say that and God knows I don't want to do it again, but you know, it's, it can be important in what you're doing and it does, it does promote a certain set of skills, but it's not, it's not a necessary thing. You know, there's a lot of ones where you can just get it through just experience. Like Aaron said, you know, get out and make some games. Yeah, yeah. Can I can I quickly emphasize just a little bit of that, right? So, you know, I, I work alongside people who, you know, didn't have the specific path that I did. You know, they just spent a lot of time, you know, learning their craft on their own. And, you know, that is say that is saying something about a person. You know, when someone tells me, yeah, here's this idea of, of a game I had. Here's the original, like I wrote it on a piece of paper, a sticky note, and here it is launched on the app store. That says volumes about them. And in some cases, a little bit more than a degree that they do have. And so, you know, I, I you know, I don't think, though, you know, these degrees are necessarily um, are, are required at all. And I don't want any students to think that, oh, I have to go to school. I have to go and get a CS degree and spend all this money. Like, no, for some people, that path is for them. But for some people, that path is just them downloading a free engine or mm -hmm. opening up YouTube and just making something. And you just, you know... 
And when you go to start applying to those places, if you can articulate your process behind that, why did you do this? Or more importantly, what did you learn from project to project? How did you apply that to the next time around? That can speak oftentimes much more volumes more than the education section on that resume. In all projects. Honesty. Yes, absolutely. Over education. Cool. Okay, um, so next, number six, what ideas, materials, or programs should a teacher, for all the teachers out there, uh, be using in the classroom to prepare a student for a career in game development? So I was going to actually hand this to Garen because he was starting to go down that path with his, with his last answer when he mentioned the, uh, the free licenses. Would you like to take this, Garen? Yeah, um, so... Uh, this question, I, I like to think, what if I were, you know, a student today? Like, what kind of things would I want? You know, uh, I've only been out of school for just a few years now, but it feels like a decade ago. Um, but if I were, you know, just in, you know, you know, elementary, middle school, high school and all that stuff, I think what I would have wanted is just give me that opportunity to explore if I had the urge. You know, I was very fortunate to have a school district with a computer lab. And, you know, I could go around and tinker on there. And that was insurmountable and so beneficial to just, you know, my curiosities, right? Like, um, so, you know, what I would recommend is like, you know, hey, teachers, you, you know, give your students a way to explore these avenues, right? As far as I'm concerned right now today, I don't think these major game engines or game technologies that you're seeing on TV and all the cool trailers require a big investment fee or a big, you know, there's no credit card. You can download the, the Unreal Engine is the name of a big popular one for free and just start making stuff. And there is such a, you know, a wealth of, you know, info about that. And if it is something that, you know, a school or a class wants to be more, you know, you know, maybe a bit more constructed and not so free form. There are educational licenses, there are educational programs for teachers to follow and like to, you know, to, to introduce them to their curriculum. So, yeah, I mean, just overall, just if, if you, you know, if you have kids that are interested in this thing, give them that way, you know, that way to explore, you know, those laptops with the basic Unity engine or something for them to tinker on. So opportunity, I think is really important. Are you team Unity or team Unreal? You know, I started as Team Unity. That was where I cut my teeth. That's where I started. But nowadays, I'm an Unreal man. Nowadays, I am an Unreal man. It is. Uh, that's what you'd recommend to beginners. Um, for beginners, I personally would recommend Unity. Gotcha. If you, yeah, specifically Unity. It's very quick. It's much simpler. They can start seeing things immediately, and that rush of progress is probably what you're going to need in that very beginning. So definitely Unity for for beginners. You're an Unreal later. Yeah, there you go. All right, cool. Um, number seven, what are the positive aspects of your job? Uh, I mean, I can take this first, which is, uh, and I, I kind of brought this up earlier, but to me, every single day is different. Um, I like that I don't have a normal routine every day. Uh, I, I'm the kind of person where I've pretty much always lived my life of just trying to find the next thing to do um, and trying to find what excites me and makes my passion shareable with others. And to me, this is the best part of what I do on a daily basis is that A, I get to work with amazing people like both of them, which I'm hoping on the Zoom call they're on my sides because um, otherwise I got a little awkward. <laughs> but um, seriously, the, the best thing about working at all these various studios or companies or wherever you end up working at is you find the people who you connect with immediately and you find the people that make your job easier. And not because they do your work, but because you know how to talk to them, you know how to work together, you know their strengths and their weaknesses and you pick each other up. So I love just connecting with people both in the studio, outside the studio and uh, giving me the opportunity to share my passion with the rest of the world because not everybody gets a chance to do that. And to be in that spot for me is incredibly positive. Awesome. Yeah, I would, I would definitely have to agree with that. You know, getting to work with such phenomenal people, getting to, um, I've, I've never been one to be able to just, uh, just a steady nine to five, you know, know what I'm going to do when I come in. I like to have challenge. I like to have just, I like there to be different things to do in my day. And I like being able to work with 
all the people I work with, they're phenomenal people. And you know, the fact that I can finally say I can be myself in a, in, in a job, in a position where before I worked so many different places, I couldn't talk about video games. Nobody knew about video games. Nobody wanted to talk about that with, with, with me. And now I work somewhere where I can do that. And that's such a big passion of mine that, you know, we have, and I'm just going to throw this out there because this is my favorite thing is that we have um, within the uh, uh, Destiny game, we have an actual, you know, group at work that we have our Destiny nights, and I, I have people to play with, and we're doing all these, you know, missions and quests and stuff like that, and I've never worked anywhere where I've had that experience, so I think being able to have that, being able to have people who share my interests is one of the coolest things um, about working here, so that's just me. <laughs> Sounds like everyone's a gamer at the uh, studio. Yeah, and I also want to quickly add, you know, our industry is definitely one of those industries and those jobs where everyone truly wants to be there every day giving their 100%. Everyone wants to make great products, great games that they want to play too. And so I consider myself incredibly fortunate to be working, you know, alongside such creative, funny you know, I hang out with these people after work all the time, you know, individuals that just come to work ready to give 110% and we're ready to make really cool stuff, you know. So for me personally, you know, of course, the engineer in me is all into all this tech and all this cool stuff I get to make on a daily basis. But truly the shining point for me is I get to work with people who truly care about their job, who truly care about the things they make. And you see that in our finished products. And I am, that's my favorite part. Yeah, that's exciting. Um, the old engineering curriculum, in general, from what I've seen, tends to uh, focus on problems, especially if it leans mechanical, civil, biomedical, those kinds of more altruistic uh, careers. But, you know, I think recently they've been updating that focus to make sure that uh, problem projects are, are trying to either solve problems or meet opportunities. There's a vocabulary shift there. Um, so I feel like if you go, you know, building wells and building, digging wells and building bridges, um, you'll, you'll have a different time doing all of that than if you were to go and make something fun that, that people are going to enjoy. Um, it's cool. It's cool either way, I think, but it's neat to see y'all's perspective. I think it's different from what the students are getting in school. Um, all right, number nine. Oh, excuse me, number eight. We already talked about this a little bit. It says what different technologies are required to do your job. So we talked about on the project management side, you got Zoom and Slack and, and Jira maybe. And then on the technical side, you've got the Unity and Unreal and stuff like that. Is there anything you all want to add to those? I would say just basic programs like, you know, Microsoft Office, um, Google and Google Suite with Google Docs, Google Sheets, all the other, all, all the lovely Googles, um, you know, and even so far as, you know, learning how to use a copy machine, because they, we do still use those, you know, using how, learning how to use a multi-line telephone, if you're going to be covering the reception desk, which I still occasionally do when we're in the office, you know, just little things like, like that, that may not seem like they're big, big game dev things, but they're pretty, you know, they're, they're pretty essential to what we do. You know, um, you know, in addition to what, you know, I spoke previously about these different game technologies and game engines and things like that, you know, but one thing I want to, I want to also emphasize is that, you know, what other, you know, I, everyone, all these kids are on Discord now. I think Discord's a big one right now. That is, I, I coordinate a lot of stuff via Discord and through these chat applications, you know, when it comes to, you know, out of work personal projects of mine. And so if they're already on Discord learning how to use all these channels and videos, they're, they're halfway there. They're halfway there. So, um, you know, don't, you know, don't be daunted, you know, uh, don't feel like you have to become a master of these big complicated game engines because your favorite games are made in these engines. And if your first game doesn't look like, you know, Halo or something, that's not the end of the world. You're starting somewhere. So, um, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, you know, just those different, you know, messaging applications and learning how to communicate. I wanted to make sure that was said. Yeah, yeah totally. Oh, and uh, just to add, um, a, a really great thing for any folks that might do any sort of art-based programs, um, there's obviously Adobe Photoshop is kind of the king of everything, but there's tons of free examples out there. You can even go as low as paint.net. Um, there's GIMP, which is a great free image editing program, just like Photoshop. Uh, I actually do a lot of work in GIMP just because it's simple and quick sometimes. So um, 
little things like that by taking your you're able to take your napkin drawing and then scan it in and then make it all pretty and send it off to somebody and say, okay, this is what we're doing. There you go. So um, I also recommend that on top of, of course, I think again, Microsoft Office, Excel, all that, and knowing how to do some basic formulas in Excel can help you a ton later in life. Um, I, I don't think people realize how even just learning the sum command, S-U-M in Excel, can make you look incredible in five minutes, so. Those are really, really good points. So a lot of people don't think about that. They think um, Excel is for, you know, accountants or data people and then um, Photoshop and the GIMP and um, I use an application online called Mural for things like that. Uh, those are for artists or designers, but I definitely see now what you, after you pointed that out, that that could be very useful for anybody. Just mock up a quick design and say, this is what I'm thinking. It's basically like a sketch pad, but it's going to be a lot prettier. Um, and I'm all, I'm all about spreadsheets too. All right, cool. So um, how else, this is number nine, how else can a student get involved in, with the game development in general while they are still in school? We talked about this a little bit. Is, it, is there anything I want to add? Oh, uh, oh! Ahead, I can jump no. in first if you'd yeah, like. Yeah, you, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I think to me, because um, the amount of social technology that's come online in even the past 10 years has been incredible. Like when I was in college, literally the only thing we had was the Facebook um, and like AOL chat rooms and ICQ and IRC. Um, but now there's like uh, Garen mentioned before, there's online clubs and discords just about like creating your own games. Join those. There's Facebook groups. Join those. There's general forums out there for just about everything. Join those. Your favorite developers, you may not even know who they are, but I bet if you look on LinkedIn or look on Twitter, you'll be able to find some of your favorite developers. And if you go to them with actual educational questions and not just criticism and by the way, constructive criticism is totally fine. Normal criticism, not fine. <laughs> but if you just reach out to somebody on social media, we have never been this connected as a society as we are in 2020. And it's a great way just to get involved with game development is play the games you like. And then guess what? Tell the creators you love their game because that just makes them want to make more games. And then they'll want to talk to you. And then you can maybe make another game together. So get out there, communicate, be a person. Um, you know, it's, it's a really important thing. I would definitely second the uh, Twitter thing. So many of our devs now are on Twitter. And I mean, yes, you say LinkedIn is another great, great place, uh, sorry, excuse me, great place for educational based questions, but Twitter's a good one too. And, and most folks, if you reach out to them with those educational questions, with those, you know, things that you have, most folks are going to actually want to respond and want to talk to you because um, not many of the devs, have like people reaching out and talking to them unless you know like these huge games they've been working on for years etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, just to kind of piggyback on what jay said i would say if you have the opportunity obviously when we're not in the middle of covid and we're we're able to go out and 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 have conventions again and do those things is get out to the conventions you know go to one, one of the best ones that i can re recommend is uh pack south down in san antonio because it's actually a relatively cheap price point to go they have a lot of indie studios that that are there and people that just will just talk to you and it's it's such a great um one to do and i know that they're you know there's there's so many other ones here and there are ones out in, out, out here in austin obviously um but you know just just to talk to people again that communication see it's all re related it all keeps coming up <laughs> that's good all right um garen are you on twitter what's your handle at at darren garen uh at my Eddie mine Garen's. is uh mine is a little bit simpler it's just garen rk g-a-r-i-n-r-k so, um, and real quick about, you know, what, you know, what students can do is make friends who are into the same things that you are. Make like-minded friends who play the same games you do or different games. And that, you know, that little microcosm of game taste and aesthetic will, I think, be very, very beneficial to just them as a game developer. So make friends who are into the same things you are. Seems like in the gaming world, there are some pretty outgoing um, communities out there that are, that are easy to thr thrust yourself into. Uh, okay, last question here. Uh, what last words of advice would you give a student who is interested in working in tech or game development? I am more than happy to take this one first. Uh, you know, don't be afraid to change your mind. I am like the poster child for that, I swear. Um, you know, just do what, do what you feel you want to do. And if you don't like it, you can change your mind. 
you know, I didn't come into the games industry until I was in my mid thirties and I enjoyed playing games. But I never actually thought of it as an actual career. So have fun, you know, just taking all the lessons that you can take in the world, like learn, learn, learn who you are, learn, learn who your voice is. And you know, just, it's okay. Change your mind. It is. I promise. <laughs> and, um, you know, life is a journey. Don't be afraid of failure. Everyone has their own journey. Everyone has their own ups and downs and, you know, just, you will fall, you will stumble, but it won't be the end. Just keep on trucking. And to build on top of that, don't be afraid of failure. It's okay to fail, but learn from the failure because that way you won't make the same failure twice and you'll turn everything into a positive nature. And that's for me, the number one piece of advice I would give, always look for the positive side of something because the person you're talking to may not know what you're talking about and assume the worst. So always try and be positive, always try and be constructive and above all remain optimistic because just having a conversation with somebody can brighten their day and that little bit can just send waves of positivity throughout. So always be optimistic, always be positive and just keep up that, you know, high end inspiration. It's really important. That's awesome guys. I hope a lot of people see this and uh and really gain a lot of wisdom from what you guys are saying. I think you have a lot to bestow. I'm going to be impressed if, if, if those, if the team sat through this entire hour, like, good job guys. Like you can, watch it at, you. <laughs> you can watch it at two X. That's what I would do. While you're watching your team. <laughs> nice. Subtitles on too, right? You know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. That was really great to, to hear everyone's input. Um, I, I felt like I took notes and it's not like anything that I haven't really heard already, but I was honestly just so excited to hear uh, the emphasis of soft skills. I think that, you know, middle school and high school students need to hear that more than more than anything. It's just the fact that we can, you know, and, and Bailey, you might be able to speak to that. Like they could get lost in all the minutia of like school, just getting assignments done and, and really at the heart of it, it is what is those skills that are going to be transferable, like you said, Allison, um, to, to their future career in the workforce. So that's really, really great. I really thank you all. And you know, that completes the interview. I really want to thank you, Addison, Garen, Jay, Bailey, for joining us today to discuss the career pathways in the game development industry. So we really appreciate your time. And for those that are watching this video as well, please, please give us a thumbs up on our YouTube channel if you are if you enjoyed this video. <laughs> and if it's your first time here with us, please subscribe to our channel so you can get like alerts for the future amazing content that we are developing all the time with Workforce Solutions Capital Area. Thank you so much, everyone. Stay safe and healthy, and it's good to see y'all.